Hello and welcome to my first tutorial. My name is Rafael Rau, you may also know me as Silverwing and today I want to talk about linear workflow. I'm doing this tutorial with um, Cinema 4D and V-Ray but you not necessarily have to work with either of those so it's more like a fundamentals of linear workflow and maybe you can learn something out of it even if you're not using this applications. So let's get started. First of all of course we have to set V-Ray as a render engine in Cinema 4D and therefore I go to the render setting normally it looks like this here and set it to V-Ray Bridge and now we get all the options of V-Ray Bridge including the color mapping I want to talk about. Here we go. And inside the color mapping and there's a linear workflow and I will just enable it and right now this would do nothing until I set the gamma to a value and I set it to 2.2 as this is the most common value pictures have applied to them. So now I want to talk a little bit more about gamma and about what it does and why it's necessary to have a linear workflow. So I made this graphic here and I put it into three sections. One is the input and this is how you bring in the pictures in your textures. One is the calculation, that's the rendering, and one is the output, and this is how you save your images. So, how to begin? Now let's explain this graphic first. If you have this graphic, um, the zero represents all blacks in your picture, and this point over there is one, and it represents the widest point in your picture. So the brightest value you monitor can handle. And this line here is a representation of a gradient reaching from black to white. So if you're watching a picture on a monitor, the monitor has a gamma curve that looks like this. And because this is the way, normal pictures that are linear look too dark on your monitor. So what generally is done is they got applied a gamma of 2.2 in order to look on your monitor linear. And the pictures on your monitor look good because they have applied a gamma of 2.2 and your monitor has a gamma of 0.454 and together they give it a linear gamma which looks nice to our eye. Now this in itself is a good system and works good but when it comes to rendering there are some problems with this because the renderer is working linearly and the application assumes that every picture you put into it um, for example a texture is a linear image but that might not be true as we learned before so normally pictures as I said get a applied gamma of 2.2 and so everything the renderer does is wrong math it thinks it's a linear gamma picture but it's a 2.2 gamma picture and so the output image is calculated in a wrong way. But there's a solution and that's right where the linear workflow comes in. So the linear workflow lets us tell the renderer that the input images have a gamma of 2.2 and the renderer needs to put a counter curve on the images before starting rendering. Now if you're doing this right, the renderer by itself makes linear images out of the images you bring into the system and can start rendering without any errors in the calculation. Now for the output there are 
two different modes you can output your image. And the first output method is putting out your images in an 8 or 16 bit file. And that implies that the renderer is giving it back its old gamma curve. Now that the rendering is done linear, that's no problem that we can have this curve applied back to the image. Because if it wouldn't be applied to the image, it, it would look too dark on your screen, as I said before. The other method is that you put your image out in a 32-bit floating point and all 32-bit floating point images are linear. So normally if you're loaded into Photoshop or something similar, the application would know that this is linear and put a gamma of 2.2 on it in order to look right on your screen. So now, as we've gone through the theory, I want to make some tests using V-Ray and the linear workflow settings and show you what they do exactly. So what I want to do first here is make sure that the linear workflow of Cinema 4D is turned off. This is because the linear workflow of Cinema 4D and the one of V-Ray clash and they are not working well with each other. So I turn off the Cinema 4D one if I turn on the V-Ray one. Um, if you don't know where, the, where to find the project settings, it's right here in the edit menu, project settings, or you just hit control D. All right, so first we go into our render settings one more time and edit something. So as you know, we have um, enabled our linear workflow and set the gamma to 2.2. And furthermore, I want to turn off the clamp output as it not produces realistic uh, results when I export the images as 32-bit. And I want to set the type from linear multiply to Reinhardt. And this is doing nothing at all right now till I get in and enter the value 0.8 here. And this is giving me a proper dynamic range. This is because all sorts of camera in the past years have tried to increase the dynamic range. And I like the way the pictures look with a wider dynamic range. So I try to emulate it inside of um, V-Ray. All right, so let's get starting with our test scene. So I will create a polygon and a light source. And I will make the polygon 1000 by 1000 centimeters. And I will make the light source a V-Ray light by putting on a V-Ray light tag on it. So here we go. Now I don't want to work with Omni lights as I prefer the area light type. So I put on a area light and go in the area light settings and increase the size from 100 to 200. Now I want to also make the light stand on the plane here on the polygon. So I move it up and I also want to move it on the edge there. Here we go. So the next thing I want to do is increase the brightness of the light. So because normally every light source in every scene has a much brighter value um, than one. So um, to explain the intensity here a little bit, the values 0 to 1 represent the values on your screen. So 0 meaning black and 1 meaning the brightest white your display can uh, manage to show. And the values that are going beyond 1 are brighter than white values. So as I said, you have to set your light source brighter than white in order to make a noticeable impact on your scene. 
So also I want to set the, in the common tab, the shadows to on because every light source has a shadow in reality. Now also I want to show you a trick how to get these overexposed areas here looking right in Cinema 4D. And that's going into the light settings and going to photometric and turning on the photometric intensity. And by adjusting this value here, you can adjust the brightness of the light in a viewport. And this is affecting only the viewport because we're rendering inside of V-Ray. Of course, if you're using the Cinema 4D renderer here, um, this value here would uh, also uh, control the brightness of the light inside of the rendering, but the V-Ray is not linked to this value, so we can use it as a workaround to get the light's brightness down. All right. So um, as we have done that, I want to show you the difference between the linear workflow and the normal workflow, or the not linear workflow. <laughs> So I'll go into the render settings real quick and set this back to the defaults. So I turn off the linear workflow and set the gamma back to 1. And now I'll do a rendering. Oh, and one more quick thing. I don't like the um, bluish background here. That's default on V-Ray. I don't know why they have done a blue background as default, but I tend to turn it to black and if you're wondering it's in the environment setting here. So let's render again and see that the light is emitting into the scene as we expected but there are two things. One thing is there's a really bright spot here and that's overexposed and on the edge to the overexposure it's really harsh. And also the gradient in which the light gets darker is also not that long and it looks kind of unrealistic. So if I go back into my render settings, go back into the color mapping and set the gamma to 2.2 and the linear workflow to on and render this again, this now looks much better. And this is because the overexposed area is now moving much more softer into the not overexposed area. And also the gradient is now much smoother and much wider than before. And this is essentially a big plus that the linear workflow does making the light sources m much smoother in your scene. So they'll look much more integrated and therefore your scene looks much more realistic then. So here's another thing I want to talk to you in this tutorial and it's about the clamp output. So if I go to my render settings here again and turn the clamp output back on also, I want to change my output to a little bit larger size, maybe the small HD. And then I'll render the scene into the viewport, or sorry, into the picture viewer. So here we go. Um, we have the scene as we would expect it. But if I now go to the filter settings, enable it and go to the exposure and bring that down, everything gets to a grayish mass. And that's not looking right. So because you might remember that the light source is 15 times as bright as white. So something's not right here. And that's because of the clamp output. So let's reset the filter here and go into our render settings again and change the clamp output to none. Now if I'm rendering this again, and go into my exposure again and pull the exposure down, now what you see is much more realistic. So now we are seeing that the light is much brighter than the rest of the scene. 
because if we are setting down our exposure, the light keeps white instead of being grayish. So if I switch between the two pictures, you see the difference. And that might not be important if you're rendering to a 8-bit or 16-bit workflow, but it is really important if you're um, working within a 32-bit workflow. And because this extra information you're getting here is giving you much more control over your scene later on in a compositing. So keep this in mind. If you're working with 32-bit, for example, an EXR workflow, just leave the clamp output off or turn it off because it's on on default. All right. So that would be it for my first tutorial. I hope you liked it and it wasn't too boring and gave you some insight into the process of a linear workflow. And if you have any questions or suggestions, just leave a comment. I'll be happy to answer it. So thank you very much for watching. And if you like more of those in the future, please let me know.